Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Bailey Bookish Podcast. We are once again covering Jane Eyre and I am joined again by Alex. Hello. I feel like I should just pre-record that because we're on episode like 15 now. <laughs> hey, it's a 38 chapter book and we'll mm-hmm. probably do it in 20 to 25 episodes, so mm-hmm. it's fine. How do you feel to be the longest running guest uh it's an honor um Mm -hmm. i want there to be you know i want to be commemorated in some way as a minor Mm -hmm. narcissist uh (laughs) and also i feel like um you know i really hope people aren't sick of me because there's there's still a lot more of this book guys (laughs) i feel like i should get you a plaque for christmas that says like longest running guest on the bailey bookish podcast I mean, that does then imply that if there are people who are going to threaten that record, that you have to tell me who they are, and I have to go to their homes and break their internet. <laughs> You're like, I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> so the, This plaque has to stay here. I can't get rid of it. So I hope you enjoyed having knees, because you don't. <laughs> I'm just imagining how to be like, hey, I'm so sorry. Someone did a 30 episode episode like a series run and i we have to ship the plaque and you're like no absolutely please. not we can cover the iliad again i don't care <laughs> trying to think of the longest worst book i've ever read that we could then read because then i would have opinions about it the art of war <sighs> that's a short book uh is it a short book it just takes nobody ever finishes it yeah it it's a book that people it it's a book that tech bros read because they're like oh you know war is commerce and innovation oh i didn't know anything people. about it i just know that like nobody seems to get through it so i was like ah yes if you're going if we're going to pick one of those then i think on war is a better option mm. because that is like that is some enlightenment bullshit theory that's that and Clausewitz is very long winded. So that would probably mm. and that's another one that tech bros really enjoy. I'm just looking up to see how long it is. What about war and peace? I oh, feel like that one's pretty hefty. That one is extremely hefty. Mm-hmm. Also not one I've read. But yeah, any Tolstoy. Anna Karenida is another one. If we want to mm-hmm. get really depressed, uh, we could read that. Because that one's also wildly depressing. Uh, yeah, so, I just um, <laughs> I'll just say I'm just that imagining someone takes a, like they do a bunch of episodes with me, and then I call you up, and I'm like, "Sorry, we have to do like 30 episodes. I hope you're not busy for the next couple of months." <laughs> just like you can keep the plaque, but we are going to have to do this. So yeah, and honestly, or send it back. Sorry, <laughs> I'm not paying for postage. Are you kidding me? <laughs> uh, according to barnesandnoble.com not to make a uh, a plug but mm-hmm. this book is or art of war is 288 pages long okay which i'm sure a significant amount of that is footnotes um but that be that being said the current penguin classics edition of jane Eyre that i'm reading is 589 pages so yeah so I think we'd have to find something longer. And I, I, the only thing I know that's longer off the top of my head is I did read Gone with the Wind and I will never speak of that book again. (laughs) I read it because someone was like, this is my favorite book. Let's do it on your podcast. And I was young and naive. because It was like one of the first ones. And I was like, okay, cool. Like I, at that time when I first started this, I read the entire book. And then I was Mm. like, we'll talk about it after. It took me a month to read that book. That is a big And then they ghosted me. No! Yeah. Which, honestly, better because um, I don't think I would ever want to talk about that book. (laughs) 
So, <laughs> uh, I just looked up "On War" by Clausewitz for no reason, for as a compare point of comparison, and mm-hmm. that book is cited at seven hundred and thirty-two pages based on the edition mm-hmm. that I'm looking at. So, what about "War and Peace"? Oh, that's over a thousand. I want to say. Let's see. The mo there's a translation from oh wait a minute where are you where is this there's a translation from 2008 which is 1,296 pages. Jeez. Mhm. It's a thick boy. Yeah. Is it good? I don't even know what it's about. It's about the Napoleonic invasion of France. Oh. Long story short uh very long story short it's about Mm -hmm. russians dealing with a french invasion um and there's a love triangle and people die and more people die and it's like russia okay i mean i might be into that i'm not gonna lie to you (laughs) um if we ever need a really long running one again we can totally do that i think that would take us a year I'm not kidding. Yeah. I think that would be a year's project at the very minimum. Yeah. It would definitely be one of those where like we have break hiatus episodes <laughs> like we did with Jane Eyre because there was a couple mm-hmm. weeks where we had it and we needed a little bit of a break, you know? Yeah. The other thing about War and Peace is if we really wanted to drag it out, you mm-hmm. read the book. And then there are like 50 film adaptations. So then we watch all of them and decide uh-huh. which one we do. We do an episode on each one and then we decide which one is the truest and best representation of the this obscenely long book. I. We could just have a war and peace podcast. Like, what are we doing? <laughs> you know what? Yeah, we could do a deep dive into the. I, I could handle the history part of it. I know not a lot about the Napoleonic Wars, but I have a lot of books on them that are mm-hmm. just waiting to be read. So, listen. Listen, if I have a year where I'm like, what am I going to read next? Right, one I whole think... year. Where I'm just like, I don't know. What is <laughs> what is next? I know. I, I've had someone ask me, they're like, okay, what are you going to do after Jane Eyre? And I'm like, I don't even know when Jane Eyre is going to end, actually. Yep. <laughs> Listen, I love Jane Eyre. It's a favorite mm-hmm. book of mine, but it does seem to just keep going. Yeah. And that's that's not a criticism of it. There is a no. lot in this book. It's mm-hmm. there's a lot to talk about. And every time I read a chapter, I'm like, we're getting a little close to the end, aren't we? And then I remember all of the shit that we have to get through and I'm like, nope. I know. Like usually by this point, like looking at how much is left that would usually be about an extra episode and i'm like it's not gonna be an extra episode for us and two like this is usually the point i start pitching other guests to see if anybody's interested and i'm like i don't want to be like hey would you be interested to read a book in like two months (laughs) right (laughs) like we maybe when we get to chapter 36 of 38 yeah uh, then you can start doing it because listen as I think we will talk about in this episode, I think this is the period of the book where the least amount of stuff happens. Mm-hmm. Like, just in terms of plot. Yeah. We're, we're going to be able, and I'm knocking on wood, and if I'm wrong in this, I'm going to be very upset with myself. We, we're going to be able to go through three chapters in this episode, because... Mm-hmm. Not much. We're, it, like, there's, there's a sort of narrative something going on here uh that is heavy on prose Mm -hmm. but light on plot so Mm -hmm. but we're gonna get back to heavy on plot very quickly so yeah and i know at least we're doing at least one movie episode maybe another we'll see we gotta at least what i want to say there's a Lawrence olivier version of jane Eyre. There's an adaptation of Jane Eyre where Charlton Heston is Mr. Mm-hmm. Rochester. Uh, which, that's wild to me. We've got... I'm trying to... What was our decision? Are we doing the most chaotic, canonically hot 
Rochester or the most canonically hot Jane Eyre? I know we like debated this. Uh, I want to say it's the most canonically hot Rochester. Or we can do one of each. We can do the most canonically hot Rochester, the most canonically hot Jane Eyre. That I, I like that idea. Uh, mm. so, so there's a Jane Eyre from 1970 where George C. Scott is Mr. Rochester. And I mm-hmm. do love me some George C. Scott. So I'd be willing to have a look at that one. There's a 1997 where Siren Hines is Rochester. And uh, the facial hair choices that I'm looking at are very problematic. Mm. Uh, and I hate. Ah, yeah. Okay. So there's a 1983 Jane Eyre where Timothy Dalton is Mr. Rochester, which I think makes him mm-hmm. the, that is the most canonically hot Rochester. Uh, there's one with William Hurt as Rochester, which is fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, there's an Orson Welles as Rochester, 1943. I, mm. Toby Stevens is fine. Oh, Fassbender was Rochester, but I don't find him that attractive. I don't know. There's something about his face. I'm just like, mm, mm. You look, yeah. Mm. So I mm-hmm. would vote for the Timothy Dalton. Mm-hmm. Jane Eyre from 1983 uh, or uh-huh. the George C. Scott those are my two those are my two votes mm-hmm. ah but the to- 2006 where Toby Stevens is Rochester Ruth Wilson is Jane Eyre and I do enjoy me some Ruth Wilson so and maybe the 2006 version will be our canonically hot Jane Eyre I, that may be I wasn't even looking at Jane Eyre's <laughs> It's just like who are the Rochesters? <laughs> I just I I don't know who any of these actors are, so I need I need visual. I need you to just like line them up for me and tell me pick between these or pick for me. Also a good option because I'm not the best with like actors, actresses, and movies because I don't really okay. watch movies. So just if you want to pick, honestly, make your own like bracket. Okay, I'm cool with that. Did you see? Um... Uh, did you watch the, I think it, I don't remember what, ch- what channel it was on, but someone did a show about, um, Catherine de' Medici. That name does not ring a bell. Recently, she's the cre- queen of France in the 16th century. Oh. Century. Um, my, my mom probably watched it. So it was, honest. it was real good. Uh, it's called mm-hmm. the Serpent Queen. Big plug. Yeah. Big plug for yeah. that. But the woman who plays Catherine de' Medici as an adult also mm-hmm. did uh, was Jane Eyre in one of the film adaptations. And she she's terrifying. Like, mm-hmm. so I can see her playing Jane Eyre in a very interesting way, depending on the choices made. I will make a bracket and send you information. Perfect. Perfect. I just, I love the idea of a mildly terrifying Jane Eyre because it really fuels into my uh, vampire Jane Eyre vibe. Absolutely. I think Jane is a little scary. So mm-hmm. I can see the vibes there being correct. This is my favorite thing Jane Eyre has ever done, actually. I'm not going to lie to you. Like, it's so chaotic. It's, it's a, it's a, and it, but it's a chaotic choice that uh, ultimately it does make sense, I think, mm-hmm. based on her character. But it's just like, her life is just this series of really shitty things. And then this, honestly, probably the shittiest thing that's ever happened to her. Mm-hmm. And so, like, I get the, you know what? I'm not dealing with this. I have dealt with all of this for my entire life. I'm out. Yeah. Goodbye. Yeah. This this hits home for me. I'm not going to lie to you. Like, sometimes it just be like that. You're like, you know what? I have gone this road. I've conquered these things. And I'm not going to do it again. I was taking a drink of Baja Blast, so I couldn't immediately respond. But yes, 100% yeah. yes. Mm-hmm. So we are on chapter 28. Um, She travels for two days in this dude's carriage. Which, first of all... She did, gave this guy all of her money. Yep. All of it. We should be clear, there's not much there. But... No. Uh, but she ends up in a town called uh, Whitcross? White Cross? I don't know. I think it's Whitcross. 
Okay. I wrote White Cross, but then the entire time I was saying it in my head, I pronounced it White Cross until like just now when I looked at it and I was like, hmm. I'm Oops. almost 100% positive it's White Cross because British. I think people. it probably is. Yeah. So she ends up leaving her parcel in the coach. The coach, and I'm pretty sure a parcel is a wallet. Yeah, all right? of her shit is now gone, as well. Yeah. So she's given, and I like to think that it's one of those where Jane has never had to deal with this before. So she's like, mm-hmm. "It's a banana, Michael. How much could it cost? Ten dollars?" And so she, mm-hmm. she like goes in and she's like, "I don't know. How much is a coach ride to here?" All of my mm-hmm. money, take it. Whatever. I just I need something to be yeah. out. And then I was like, still... looking at the cost of things. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just thinking. I'm just saying. I think Jane maybe probably could have haggled him down. Oh yeah. He he looked at this rich fancy girl coming out of a mansion and was like, "It's gonna be five thousand dollars." Right. He's like, but it says four fifty for the first mile and three dollars a mile after that. He's like, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's regular prices for regular people, but you're special, so like it's really making me realize, like, for the fact that she like most people's salary is like thirty pounds a year. And she gave him twenty two dollars. Twenty two pounds. To travel for two days. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, he definitely took advantage of her. He he did good. And he got her shit because she left it in the cage. Yeah. What a, like, trash person. I mean, I don't know that Jane has met many people who aren't trash. So I think we have to expect that trash is going to be the common It's on par. Yeah. Yeah. Like, this is, yep, this is what we expected. Yeah. Also, he dropped her not even in a town, just in a middle crossing way road thing. He's like, here's a sign. It'll take you where you need to go. Mm-hmm. Goodbye. Yeah, and apparently it's 10 miles to the nearest road. And it's not like this girl is, like, well-fed, you know? She's got, like, skin on her bones. I feel like expecting her to walk 10 miles is, um, it's a bit of a hike. Mm-hmm. Yep. So she's back with her one true calling, the Moors. <laughs> yes. Um, and she's like, okay, it's the middle of the night. I don't know what to do. I guess I'll sleep in the woods then. Which I guess, what is her other option, honestly? I mean, she literally has nowhere to go and nothing. No money to buy things and nothing to her name. So yeah, she mm-hmm. goes and just like ghosts on the moor for a bit. Just vibes. Mm-hmm. Literally. So, um, before she goes to sleep, while she's, like, just curls up into this low-hanging branch, uh, she decides to play for Ro- pray for Rochester that he, like, finds happiness. I'm like, mm, no. <laughs> Don't do that. There are so many other things you could be praying for that are better. That are more mm-hmm. deserving. Mm-hmm. pray for bertha pray for grace Poole. Yeah. The, yep. those two people who are being victimized i mean grace Poole mm-hmm. is being employed but you know her life ain't easy and we've established that she is the true hero of this story so mm-hmm. you know spare a thought for them not for the dude who's keeping them locked in an attic literally i forgot that's another episode we have to do is the uh follow-up Mm, yes, we have to do Wide Sargasso Sea, which we could probably mm-hmm. do in five to ten episodes. <laughs> no, that is one we'll have to read and just discuss in one, yeah. one episode. Yeah, especially because like with newer books, I try not to get too nitty gritty because I want people to like pay for them. So, yeah, like I'll like go over like the general plot, but like also just buy it, please, and support authors. I want to say I want to say that book is not actually that recent. It is I think it came out in like the eighties, nineteen sixty six. Oh, I feel less bad then. I mean, it's still modern, mm-hmm. but it has been around for almost sixty years. So, okay, the like 
possibility that the author's dead is really what I work for here. Oh, I want to say almost certainly dead. Yeah. So then that's fine. We can, I can get further to the plot. Cause it's like, it's, uh, you know, like, I don't know. It's like when they're like, it goes to her estate or like the author's estate. I'm like, mm, they didn't write it. It's fine. <laughs> Listen, I mean this in the most sincere way possible. Intellectual property rights should not outlive the person who created them. Mm-hmm. Like you, you, I fully believe that if you created that, you should be able to make use of it for the entirety of your life because it is yours. Mm -hmm. You made it. But once you are dead. Out the window. Right. And and, and if you disagree with me, don't at me. Yeah. It's whatever. It's whatever. The one thing I draw the line with is like with the way AI technology is, you should not be able to make a person absolutely like died yeah do yeah, stuff no. like that no I, however i believe ai should be thrown in a dumpster and set mm-hmm. on fire at mm-hmm. least at least for create creative quote-unquote purposes yeah absolutely the fuck not it's not mm-hmm. art it's not entertainment don't do it mm-hmm. fuck that mm-hmm. like if you want to use ai to like do checklist stuff like manual like labor that doesn't matter fine like mm-hmm. i don't whatever that doesn't matter but like being like ai can write stories no no it can't no it can't it cannot i'm sorry yeah like i don't know like i know you're not like into the blogging space but people have been using ai to write recipes now oh god yeah and i'm like yeah that's a terrible idea like one it's not that far along Mm -hmm. and it's like being to have like the knowledge to do that and two no like if your entire platform is like if you own a blog and your entire thing is doing food recipes i'm sorry but like do them like just do them there you go or if you want to freelance that out fine but like if your entire platform is blog uh, is like doing recipes and you decide to like hire a robot that you don't pay to do that like no sorry Right, because that is, I mean, I, I don't know that I'm going to allow that robots can even do labor. Uh, mm-hmm. And I'm not going, like, that's not a question I'm interested in. But, like, mm-hmm. at that point, you're just not doing anything. Yeah. So what like, is the what? point of you? Literally. I don't get it. Yeah. I mean, I'm certainly not a person who's like, you need to work to have value. No, mm-hmm. that is not no. where I stand. But, like, if you have decided... That this is your livelihood. Mm-hmm. Then do it. Yeah. If you're going to have like a creative-ish thing. Yeah. At least do some form of it. Like if you want to hire freelance writers out because you just enjoy like the general upkeep of the website. Or like managing the ideas that come around it. Fine. Like whatever. Like I get that at some point you grow too much and you need writers. But like no that's not an AI robot. You know what I mean? Yep. Uh, with you 100% on that. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot why Anyways, I was talking about this. I don't know. I don't know. It's fine. <laughs> okay. Well, we can circle well, back to the that Jane Eyre is mm-hmm. out on the moors. Mm-hmm. Um, so Jane's like, I have no idea what to do. I've got no money, no prospects. And in my note, I said, and no parents to burden. <laughs> <laughs> Accurate. <laughs> um she ends up finally getting like a slice of bread for some random farmer she passes by he was like sitting outside eating his dinner and she's like can i have a piece of that and he's like um sure and i love her i there's i think there's some notion in there she's like i don't know if why he gave it to me and she lists a couple reasons of why it could be and it's like jane because you look like a skeleton wearing a dress Mm mm-hmm you look like you're dying. So mm-hmm. you found like the one good person in town who was like, it would be a shame if this young person starved to death right in front of my yeah. human eyes. I will yeah. try and prevent that from happening. It does make me think of that Reddit story. I don't know if you've ever seen this Reddit story, but like this guy, it sticks in my head that he was making like, I, I don't know if it was Indian food or just like his food from like his culture. 
or whatever. And his like pregnant neighbor knocks on the door. It's like, is there any chance that I could like, please have a bite of that? I don't know what you're making, but like, I am craving it so bad. And he was like, sure. And like makes her a little plate. And he's like, I've never seen someone like happier walking away from my door before. That's a like any of it sticks in my head just because it sounded yummy at the time. But mm-hmm. I don't know if it actually was Indian food. But still, like, this. so this is a thing that I was going to bring up, mm-hmm. is, like, I think the the interesting part of this chapter, because there's there truly is not a lot going on besides wandering mm-hmm. and starving, um, we get some nice Victorian social moralizing, because mm-hmm. Jane is so distressed about the idea that she might uh, be the recipient of charity. Um, mm-hmm. and then <laughs> And then she goes into town, and no one chooses to be charitable everyone mm-hmm. is like who the fuck are you leave and Jane's literally like, i will do work i can do anything and people are like mm, no yeah none of that. thank you so it's just it's it's interesting to me to think that like this is written in a victorian context this is written in a time of like christian piety and charity and jane's mm-hmm. out there literally being the thing that you're supposed to you're supposed to take care of the poor you're supposed to take care Mm -hmm. of the suffering and jane wants to work she wants she doesn't want the charity but she does need to eat and not a single person is willing to step out and be like maybe Mm -hmm. this literal human child who is barely 18 maybe they shouldn't starve to death it's it like this is such a damning social commentary mm-hmm. to me that is like that is that is the one small value of this chapter is just yeah it's wild i know but it's kind of beautiful you know what i mean to like like beautifully haunting i guess it's like to actually get this like look into the times absolutely yes like mm-hmm. it's it's taking this veneer of quote civilized christian society that it Mm-hmm. And it's just like here are your values here are is how you are absolutely not living up to them because i absolutely believe these interactions feel very real you mm-hmm. know like i in this moment i feel like this is charlotte bronte really drawing on some kind of experience of ob- yeah. observation or living it and you know maybe she that is not the point she is trying to make but that is the point that is coming across to me is like this is a bunch of fucking hypocrites and mm-hmm. we know we know Charlotte Bronte does not tolerate a hypocrite or enjoy one. I love it. I know. She's so like brutal. I just this is just so beautiful. Like she's just like I you know, with most books like of this time, they're like, oh, and then we just like help the poor. And Charlotte Bronte's like, did you? Right. She's like, when the poor came to the this this city's door mm-hmm. uh everyone shut their doors except for that one farmer yeah and did, i want to say the farmer also was like questioned by his family they're like why did you do that i, don't I may remember. be misremembering that but like i feel like even the people who do help there's some mm-hmm. sort of social ramification that they experience because of it and mm-hmm. yeah the like it's a very interesting it's a i think it's one of the more social commentary chapters that we've gotten the other being the sort of lowwood experience you know mm-hmm. like looking at these sort of charitable boarding schools quote unquote charitable they're supposed mm-hmm. to be helping people and just seeing how absolutely terrible it is this book needles more at christian piety than i remember but i'm mm-hmm. I'm, I'm appreciating it yeah it's really good so it's like dark she's starving she's like i don't know what i'm gonna do and she sees this light on and she's like yep i'm going there i mean she's about to break into someone's house but this is also like a crazy like if you picture this scene it's also Mm -hmm. like crazy beautiful that like she's just out on this desolate moor it's raining buckets and there's just that one like Mm -hmm. pinpoint of light that she's going for Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I said I there's not dying. a lot going. I mean, yeah, right. It mm-hmm. is there is some sort of overlap where like is this death that she is walking toward or is this mm-hmm. life and it's not clear at the end of yeah. the day until she gets there. 
that oh mm -hmm. in fact this might be something that helps her it's just uh so then she um is like sitting outside and she watches these two little girls well i thought okay i thought they were like children they're no they're adult they're ass like, human beings yeah yeah, I don't know. I, for some reason, I really thought they were children this whole time until, like, I later find out they are not. So, um, yeah, so excuse any time I call these girls children, because I think they're, like, 18. Like, they're think, probably the same as Jane. I think they're older. Than, I think they're mid-20s, oh, okay. at least. Well, they're unmarried, and it's, they, the brother said it was, like, weird that Jane was unmarried, so I was assuming they were younger. I'm just going to see if anyone has uh, an age for them. Because, I mean, they're going to be governesses, so. Yeah. S somewhere between, like, 18 and 25, probably. Uh, it doesn't really look like anyone has specifically. So, like, Sinjin is supposed to be somewhere in his 20s. Probably. Who's Sinjin? That's Mr. Rivers. That's their brother. St. John? Yeah, it's pronounced Sinjin. What? Yep. This is a Brit This is a wild British thing, but his name is Sinjin. Yep. What? Yep. Yep. Sinjin. Like, hmm. sin, like the bad thing that the Catholics don't want you to do. And gin, mm -hmm. like the thing you mix with tonic to have a delicious beverage. All I'm saying, so they have the name John. Like, yep. I don't like that. Well, uh, 16 year old Alex also really didn't like it. Yeah. The first time I read this, I, my English teacher made a point to like, whenever we would talk about it to emphasize the name. And we all thought she was crazy, but then we realized she was right. And that made us angry. Yeah, no, I don't. Cause I remember you saying that. So I was like, keeping an eye out mm -hmm. for someone named Sinjin. And um, I was like, okay, well, we got St. John, so maybe... I'm so mad. Here he so is. thanks. Yep, you're welcome. I hate that. That's British, why? <laughs> I would just like to say, I did a Google search for the age of the sisters. Um, mm -hmm. And then it's also giving me, like, other questions that people asked. Mm -hmm. And uh, the first one is the age difference between Rochester and Jane Eyre, which is an important mm -hmm. question because he's ancient, uh, mm -hmm. almost 40. The second one, is Mr. Rochester a creep? Yes. And the answer, yes. Yes, he yes. is. <laughs> he did attempt to groom her, so... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, so anyway, yeah, I think the sisters are, I think they're, they're in their 20s. Um, okay. Because I, I think Sinjin is closer to his thirties, and I think he's he's older than they are. Um, okay. So I, I I think they're in their mid twenties. All right. So she watches these two girls read to each other in German, and she's like, "That's cool." And then they're using a dictionary to translate it, which I think is funny. Mm -hmm. um, and then we find out that both these girls, their fought that they're orphaned. Both their parents have died. And then, like, Jane decides to knock on the door, and their servant Hannah comes out and's like, "Yeah, you gotta leave." <laughs> I was like, "You no." And then Jane's like, "Get your mistresses out here." And like, very can I speak to the manager? Energy going on right now. Yes. Yeah, and so she just like starts like they start like fighting on the porch, and then Hannah's like, "You've got to go. Like, I don't know who you are. You have to leave." I'm definitely picturing a broom about to just mm -hmm. like push Jane off the porch. Like, off mm -hmm. you go now. There you go. Mm -hmm. And Jane, who is seven pounds soaking wet, 
I don't think would be able to stop this from happening. No. So then Sinjin apparently decides to invite Jane in and Jane's like, see, was that so hard? Like very Karen right now. And then promptly faints. <laughs> yeah. Huh. And then like start feeding her and she just passes out. Um, she does decide to go by the name Jane Elliot. I'm like, okay, weirdo. I love and I love the line she's like I decided to adopt an alias in italics yeah. like, like she's yeah, literally so dangerously like okay Jane it's like me being like yeah my name isn't Rachel it's actually Rochelle <laughs> yes you know <laughs> don't mind me yeah you know very casual so the family's like Okay, like, what are we going to do with this, like, random homeless woman? And, or I guess, like, unhoused woman. I don't actually know what people are saying now. I I, I use unhoused. Okay. I know Candace corrected me once, and I forgot, because I haven't had to say it in a long time. And I was like, I don't know what it is anymore. I, um, stick, I stick to unhoused, and I, I think yeah. that is generally acceptable. Okay. It's like a TikTok kind of messed me up with um, when it's like instead of saying suicide, they say like commit on alivement. On alivement. Yep. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't, because I know that there's like some another way to say it, but I cannot remember besides committing on alivement. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I'm just like, that's not the right one. That's, that's not- incorrect. It's a, a way to say it, we'll say. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, that's not. Because I know there's another way people are saying it now that's, like, more comforting. That's not the mm-hmm. word I'm looking for. But I'm like, I don't I don't remember what we're saying. Because <laughs> I mm-hmm. just remember what we say so the algorithm doesn't know what we're saying. Right. Yep. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, anyway, yeah, they, they are debating this poor unhoused woman that they now have on their hands. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. They're like, okay, fine. She can stay the night, I guess. And then we are on to chapter 29. So she's literally just sleeping constantly in these people's guest room. Mm -hmm. Like, I... All I'm imagining is, like, have you ever, like, seen someone who brings, like, a stray cat home that was, like, feral? No. Okay. Basically, when you get a feral kitten home... They need to kind of just like acclimate. So you kind of just lock them in a bathroom. Like you have to lock them in a small room. Okay. So that they can just like have a safe spot that they can adjust. Mm -hmm. But it's like a month. They are just like barely coming out of this tiny little room that they're in. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just imagining like Jane being a feral kitten right now. is like she's in this small room and like every so often you open the door and she just kind of like rolls over adjacent to a kitten hissing and then you close the door (laughs) you're like still alive okay good right yeah excellent i mean jane does have feral cat vibes so Mm -hmm. i think that's not inaccurate Mm -hmm. i'm gonna send you some videos later of this feral kittens i do like the idea that jane is just like so she's starving and basically dying of exposure and so they're just like let's just put her in a room and see what happens uh it's mm-hmm. like do we call a doctor i don't know that might cost money <laughs> so just gonna, literally like why are you i mean I, listen i don't know if the medical profession was um more expensive or what was going on but mm-hmm. i feel like if a person dying shows up on mm-hmm. your doorstep you're just like Maybe we just get a medical professional because Sinjin is like, nah, she's fine. It's like yeah. on what, and you are basing your opinion on the on what, sir, on what experience that you have, sir. Well, it's like this is the way like a lot of teenagers die of like alcohol poisoning. It's because they're like, oh, you know, he just needs to sleep it off, and you're like, no, no, he needs to get his call a professional because he's yeah. gonna die. Yeah. <laughs> somehow Sinjin is right though and Jane is just cold and wet and tired and mm-hmm. and hungry so mm-hmm. and then Sinjin does say that she's nothing special to look at and I'm like why are you <laughs> <laughs> yes like 
we're having this discussion about this human mm-hmm. life that we've saved and he's just like i don't know she's not that hot in fact she's not hot <laughs> at all and you're like my guy what yeah all i'm imagining though is like in the movies when like the supermodel is like there and she goes i don't know she's not like that hot eyeballs you know I'm just looking so, at, at the casting of Sinjin in various Jane Eyre movies. Don't mind me. Most canonically hot. Third third option. Most canonically hot Sinjin. Okay, so in the 2011 movie, they got Jamie Bell to be Sinjin Rivers. So, like, not an unattractive man. Um, I like that. Oh, also Judy Dench was Mrs. Fairfax in that movie, which is... Mm funny because i don't feel like that's a very dignified role but it's judy dench so anyway um we can continue talking about what a shit sinjin is fair so um she she's talking about how she's like wasted away and i'm like haven't you only been gone for like four days (laughs) like not even but and you're not you don't eat anyway so i think that might be the problem there's a bird on my window. Hmm. That was cute. He put his little feetsies in the screen. Oh. Yeah, I wish Moon was in here to see this. Um. So then she, like, starts... She, like, comes down, and nobody's in the house except Hannah. And she starts, like, roasting Hannah for calling her a beggar. And I'm like, yes. you literally were one. Oh, my God. <laughs> just <laughs> she's like you should feel ashamed of yourself uh because uh-huh. of the way that you treated me me yeah. a not beggar and it's like jane what were you doing like i'm sorry but like if it people make assumptions the first time you meet someone it's just kind of the way we get through society You know, it's to protect ourselves, all that kind of stuff. So if you come to a house begging for money, they're going to assume that you're poor and you're a beggar. That's just kind of the way the world works, you know? Mm -hmm. Yep. And that's not a wrong assumption. You have no money. Yeah. (laughs) And then, I I mean, this novel also does that weird thing where Mm -hmm. they're like, we're going to write the dialect or we're going to try and capture the dialect of this particular place, which I I don't ever find endearing. It's all, it always feels so very patronizing and weird. It always feels racist to me. Yeah. Yes. And I mean, obviously we're coming from that tradition where this is a thing that American authors do when they're trying to capture African-American speaking and it, it's Mm -hmm. gross. Mm -hmm. It's, it's so it, like like oh we're just trying to catalog it it's like no you're trying to make fun of it i know exactly what mm-hmm. you're doing and that is what this feels like as well where it's just like look at this uneducated northern english woman being being judgmental being prejudiced and being silly when they talk like it's mm, yeah. i never like these i never like when this happens the two sisters are like jane why are you in the kitchen like, you have to be in the parlor. You're a guest. Mm-hmm. And Jane's like, okay. <laughs> there's a there's a lot of... Uh, well, again, this is Jane being like, if, you're, if you've, you've been nice to me, so I have to, like, reciprocate that by doing work. So she's working in the kitchen, and then yeah. the, the sisters are like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> what is again, lots of classism here? right Absolutely, now. yes. Yep. So Sinjin, which I'm still enraged about, um, won't even look at Jane when she sits in the parlor. And I'm like, "Mm, okay. Totally normal behavior. Yeah, totally casual. So Jane finally tells them that she has no friends or family. She has nobody to go to, nothing to fall back on. And um, they're like, okay, so like, where'd you live before? And she goes, that's a secret. And I'm like, way to be scared Jane. (laughs) Yes. She's just like, I cannot say. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, okay. Because something normal happened, right? It's like, mm-hmm. I cannot say. 
And she's All like, right. I will not tell you why I last why I left my last job. Um, but it's through no fault of my own. I'm like, yeah, that's what everybody says. <laughs> right. Sure. Mm-hmm. She's being just the most sketchy. Yep. And um, the brother immediately figures out that Elliot is not her last name. And she's like, that, the name's also my secret. Mm-hmm. Um, so the brother's like, okay, fine. I will find a job for you then, I guess. And Jade's like, perfect. Thanks. And then we're on to chapter 30. Woo. So Jane is like loving hanging out with these sisters. She's like, these are my besties. I love all your guys' hobbies. Like she finds some real girl power energy right now. Yes. We love that for Jane. Yeah. And then Jane's like, these girls are a lot smarter than me though. Which like, <laughs> is kind of the worst when that happens. Like, I've had that happen quite a few times where I'm like, oh, these everybody I'm hanging out with is drastically more intelligent than I am. And like that feels like the worst because there's nothing you can really do to change that moment. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And you're just kind of like, mm, mm. They're, and it's like they're never trying to make you feel bad for it. But it's like you all also know that I'm not nearly as smart as you are, right? Like we're we all kind of knowing this. Okay. I feel like there's just I mean, I don't know that Jane's actually dumb. I think this is yeah. another like I'm not saying that. I'm just saying like you know like when pe- you're uh, around people that are like a lot more like intelligent than you in like a specific thing. Yes. Which is like drastically more of a common occurrence than what you're intelligent in and you're just like, "Ugh." Wait, you know how to build things? Shit. You know how plumbing works? Ah, oh, fuck. What? Okay. Okay. Um uh, Meanwhile, cute. these girls are like, "You do know ger- the German language, right?" You, you speak German yeah. and Jane's like, no, no. And they're like, hmm, pity. Yeah. Like where I'm from, it's very heavily bilingual. Um, just like where I grew up mostly. Um, so it's like when you're like around people and they're all having conversation in Spanish and you're like, I wish I was more educated than I am at this current moment in time. I think that's absolutely it. I think Jane is like Jane because of the shit that she went through at Lowood, like her, you know, her mm-hmm. education is not good. And you know yeah. that these two girls are very privileged and got mm-hmm. like a good education for women at the time. So mm-hmm. like, I think, I think that is absolutely part of the tension of Jane being like, I'm dumb. It's like, no, you just had a really shitty education. It's yeah. not your fault. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, I think she is intelligent. Just like, in a certain aspect of like intelligence like there's so many layers of intelligence in a certain aspect she is not like the most but it's fine um so jane's just feeling a little insecure about that but she's like i am not becoming besties with sinjin right now um things are not going as well with him so jane's like i don't think he likes being a clergyman like, she's kind of realizing that he's just, like, not really that into it. Yep. And I'm like, that's interesting. That's spicy. And uh, he's also super quiet and reserved. And Jane is not a fan of this. And I'm like, you are also very quiet and reserved. Like. <laughs> no, I. Th- I think the thing with Sinjin that really comes through. Mm hmm. And and of course the the thing that we'll get in we're we're getting towards is like Sinjin and Rochester are like the two men in her life mm-hmm. that are like and they're set up to be like these polar opposites, right? Like mm-hmm. she's going from Rochester, who's this like wild whatever he is, um mm-hmm. to Sinjin who's like so wound up. Mm -hmm. And just, like, coiled and ready to spring where Rochester has, like, sprung, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like, Rochester has done all kinds of shit in his life, and he's just been, like, floozing around the continent to do it. And, like, Sinjin is, like, I am stuck as this fucking village parson making no money in this Mm -hmm. bumfuck nowhere town, and I am smart, and I hate it here. Yeah. And it's, like, I think... I think the the comparison is very is like Sinjin is almost Rochester when Rochester was a young man. 
in a way, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. Like mm-hmm. Rochester was also that like he had plans. He had all of this stuff he was going to do and then mm-hmm. life intervened. But like they are two mm-hmm. sides of a coin in a way. And with Sinjin, yeah. it's all just this like repressed energy that is that has mm-hmm. absolutely no outlet where Rochester is just like all of his energies he puts out into the universe. Like all of the things that he's feeling, he just throws mm-hmm. it around. He's just like slapping stuff all over the place. And Sinjin is like, if I ever show any emotion whatsoever, everything will be ruined. It's all bad and terrible. And I think these mm-hmm. are two, like, this is one of the reasons I love Sinjin, even though he is, mm-hmm. spoilers, a shit. Uh, Rochester, also a shit. But they're two mm-hmm. different shits in two, like, anyway. Sinjin is like when you're trapped at your first minimum wage job. Yes. Energy. Yes. It's like, they're like, hey, Sinjin, if you keep working hard, you know, you might make it to management. And Sinjin's like, I am 30 years old and mm-hmm. I have been a clergyman and I do all of this fucking work. And here we are. Mm-hmm. Still like doing the same thing. I'm like, I get it. I get, I get that restless energy. You don't want to. Mm-hmm. He's an ambitious guy. He wants to do things with his life. And we'll find out what those things that he wants to do are. But. Like. I think Jane is being uh, observant here. Mm-hmm. And I, I, you know, I think that she is expressing an empathy and an ability to read people that. Maybe is uncommon in this area at the moment. And that's maybe why she might bond with Sinjin eventually. Who knows? Who can say? Who can say? So it's three days before the sisters are going to leave to go be governesses. And Jane like goes up to him and she's like, hey, so uh, did you find me a job or anything? Like, I kind of need to figure out what I'm going to do. And he's like, oh, yeah, um, you're not going to like it, though. And Jane's like, I will literally take anything. I don't care. And he's like, cool. I'm glad you said that. Um, right. I'm glad you're <laughs> motivated in that way. Yeah. He's like, I can make you a teacher for the poor. You make $30 a year. And Jane's like, all right, I'll take it. And he's like, you're going to give up in like two years. And Jane's like, I'll take it. You don't have to try and talk me out of it. I'll take it. And then they're all about to leave and they get a note that their uncle died. Their quote, Uncle John. And I was like, um, isn't John Eyre her uncle? But like that doesn't, that connection doesn't happen. However, it's just my little prediction. I think this is her uncle too. And I think they're related. Because he let. Do you think such a coincidence could occur? Could such a thing possibly happen? Mm -hmm, Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And he left all of his money to a long lost niece. Mm hmm. Yeah. Who, oh, and we, we have no idea who that is. Yeah. It's impossible to say. Impossible to say. So I just think it's interesting. And that's where we are left. Indeed. Jane settling in, kind of. Mm hmm. So I guess she's not going to go be a teacher because now they have a dead uncle. So maybe she's going to go with them to this funeral moment and be like, mm. oh, I don't know. Anything could happen. Anything could happen. We've got eight chapters left and anything could happen. Uh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited for you to find out. Me too. I'm so excited. <laughs> uh, okay. But that is where we leave you all. We will be joining next week for all of the juicy hot goss that's going to happen in this book. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Alex, where can the people of the internet find you and the stuff you're working on? Uh, what are the things? Where is, um, I'm on uh, Twitter at Mightiest Finn and Blue Sky at Mighty Finn. Um, I write games. We just, uh, our Kickstarter ended and we are funded. So I'm going to be writing uh, some gothic horror ttrpgs in the upcoming months uh you will be able if you didn't uh make the kickstarter but you are interested there will be links as to how you can uh still have a look we've got pdfs and hard copies um 
So you can check that out on my socials. Otherwise, I run games. And uh, I also post about those. I also post really cute pics of my tiny dog, Finn. And that's the best thing that you will find on my pages. Uh, but that's it. That's it. Um, that's what's going on. So Finn is very mighty. We'll start there. He is so mighty. He is the mightiest man, despite being the tiniest man. Tiny and mighty. Yeah. But we will see you all next week. Same time, same place. Bye! Bye!